Hello everyone. As you know, June 19th has ended, and I am very excited to announce the winners of this event. Gwen, Darcy, and Kyler are the winners. I'm going to be getting in touch with all of you soon to let you know which you have won and uh, we can discuss further on what it is. For those of you who don't know, those who won won the opportunity to be in future comic books. Uh, one winner gets a character, another gets a name of a location, and the other will get a ship based on their personality or preference. And then I'll be working on all of this and I'll post everything and tag y'all in it. The way I'll be choosing who wins what is I'll do the same thing again and, you know, whoever won first, the first pick goes to that person and then so on and so forth. So I got something wrong. It was actually June 14th that I should have been having this event. I was looking at the wrong date for something, got a little mixed up. Uh, so next year, the official Italian Stallion celebration date is going to be June 14th because that is when the inspiration started back in 2015. I was actually gonna get into a little bit of the story of what started it all. You see, I had just finished my freshman year of high school, and I was done with relationships, love in general, because things went south with a girl, and I was done. I was like, for a little while, at least, I don't want to deal with all this relationship stuff. The next week, I, you know, go to my church, and I go to my usual friend group, and we're just hanging out and then the freshmen were graduating or the eighth graders were graduating into being freshmen and this I see this one girl and my I just I'm literally drooling and my friends were making fun of me for it like it was bad and they told me of course you know she's out of your league never gonna happen and I agreed with them so I didn't plan up on you know I didn't plan on walking up to her and talking to her so, you know, they all got up on this little stage thing that we had and introduced themselves. And then we had a breakfast event thing. So we didn't really do Sunday school that morning. We're just hanging out. Now, I was told later the other side of the story um, by Rose. I'll, that's not her actual name, but I, you know, for her safety and identity, I'm calling her Rose, because uh, that ended up being her pet name. Rose had told me that, you know, she had looked in and didn't really see anyone she was familiar with and sat down next to someone that, one. there was one person there she kind of recognized to talk to, and this just so happened to be an ex from the last year, and, you know, it's very ironic how that happened, but she was basically saying, oh man, I feel bad for so-and-so over there. It was one of her friends hanging out with me in my group. And, you know, Rose asked, why? Uh, why would you feel bad? She said, well, because of Ethan and his group. They're very immature, very childish, and that's just not a good situation. So Rose, being who she was, uh, decided to come meet me because of which and uh, judge me for herself. So she got up and walked to our circle and then we met. Uh, we actually couldn't look away from each other and it was the first time I could actually look into someone in the eye and feel safe. And I don't know, we just clicked. Of course, everybody was after her at that point for good reasons. At the end of church, or that Sunday school, um, we were going to go sit in our regular spot, and she ended up coming with us. At first, she wasn't supposed to, but she ended up being able to. And we sat down. I gave one of my friends my phone because he didn't have one at the time, so I let him play with mine during church, and I, I would just pay attention to the sermon. And then, of course, Rose sat next to me, and she started writing notes. And I was like, okay, girl can take notes. That's good. Well, then she hands it to me, and it's actually a question, and we actually start passing notes during the rest of church. Um, and that's how we got to know each other for the first time. And that 
was the beginning of a really long relationship and hard. It was very hard. And that's what inspired Italian Stallion, or the big, the, one of the biggest factors of it. Later on, um, I had joined the football team a little bit before then. And a little later on, my coach gave me the nickname Italian Stallion. And then I went to art class, and that's when I started this whole comic book process. Uh, back in my sophomore, junior year. More like my junior, probably. And then my senior year uh, in multimedia is when I decided to do it digitally and put it all together. And the rest is history. I would be done with my second comic book if my computer wasn't bugging out. But luckily, that's going to be fixed this next week. As soon as I get my paycheck, I'll be having a new computer and be able to get back into the groove of working on my comic books. I'll let y'all know what, when you'll be introduced or when your, you know, character ship or location will be in a comic book. I'm planning on putting all three of them into one thing. The character owns the ship in that location. That way it stays simple and everybody can anticipate that. Um, I plan on having future competitions, probably not quite like this, but we'll see. Uh, it depends on how much I grow by then and how much I'm still working on this all. Thank you all for participating and kind of paying attention. I am really excited for the future. Please, you know, share who I am with other people if you think they're interested. I hope you enjoyed the story. That's not usual. I don't usually plan on putting those kinds of things on this channel, but I figured that it should be somewhere accessible and I think that it was the right time for this little bit of it anyway. I look forward to the future and what it has in store for Rubber Chicken Productions, for Italian Stallion, and for me. I guess we'll just have to wait and see.